everybody excited this morning? Yeah. For this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. No matter what we're going through, God is with us, and God is for us, and we'll, we'll win. Amen? We win. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It said that Psalms 111, it says, Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with all my heart. No half-hearted, full-hearted. Amen? I will give thanks to the Lord with all my heart as I meet with his godly people. Amen? How amazing are the deeds of the Lord. All who delight in him should ponder them. Everything he does reveal his glory and his majesty. He causes us to remember his wonderful words. Amen? How gracious and merciful and merciful is our Lord. He gives food to those who fear him. He always remembers his covenant. He has shown his great power to his people by giving them the land of other nations. In heaven, he found how wonderful it is, Father God. How wonderful it is for us to know you as our Lord and Savior, Jesus, Lord. Lord, we humble ourselves this morning, Father God, as we come to seek your face, Father God. Lord, we just thank you. We reverend your holy presence in this place, Father God. We reverend your anointing upon this place, Father God. We just know who we are in Christ, Father God. That we are redeemed from the curse of the Lord, Father God. And we can come to you, Father God. We can come to the throne of God with boldness, Father God. And we thank you, Father God. Not ashamed, Father God. You are so merciful to us, Father God. In our life, in our life, Lord, we live our life to worship the King of Kings, to worship the Lord of Lords, the Lord of all nations, Father God. We just lift your heart this morning, Father God. We open our mouths and we say, praise the Lord for he is good. He is good to be. He is good to our place. Praise the Lord for he is good to our families. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Release your faith this morning as you worship, as you seek him. Hallelujah. God is for us. God is for us. Hallelujah. We are so grateful, Father God. We are so grateful for life, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for signs and wonders, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for the gifts of the Spirit, Father God, working in this place this morning to receive, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Let us pray in the Spirit for a little bit. Amen. Shanda barra da sunda, mama rada siunda, mama rada sunda. Era na masha da barra da sura, mama rada sunda. Era na shunda, mama rada sura, da mama rada sunda. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we worship you. Hallelujah.
It's holy.
Lord. The Lord is good today. Yes. Praise the Lord. Father, we just give you thanks. We give you praise. We just honor you. Magnify you today. Thank you, Lord. We still do wonders, miracles, and signs. You, you're still the same. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, forever. And so we're just so grateful. So thank the Lord. What you do. So, Lord, we just do our best to get out of the way so you can have your way. So thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you're still healing, Lord. Just healing, God. Thank you, Lord. 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 Zita Neighbor, tell them the Lord is good. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. I want to remind you of a, a word that we had uh, a few. It's August 18th, and uh, it wasn't an utterance, but a, it was something the Holy Spirit was just impressing me strongly about. It was uh, I said something about September. Does anybody remember that? <laughs> September is is the start to a season. <laughs> Usually in the natural, it's a couple of months. But God's seasons last a whole lot longer. They're not bound by a few months or something like that. And oftentimes when we think of change coming, we're thinking, well, a little here and a little bit there. But no, this is like there's a big change coming for people. Big changes. Turn to your neighbor and tell them big changes. And it's going to last a long time. Good changes. Hallelujah. September is coming. You just have to get your heart ready. Start expecting. Say, I'm expecting a great, great, I'm expecting great blessings in September in my life. Hallelujah. Great changes. Great changes. Hallelujah. Good changes are coming into my life, into my home, into my finances, into my health, into the ministry that God called me to. Hallelujah. Now, if you can receive it. I receive and believe it, you'll begin to see it. Receive it in Jesus Paul said, this is my earnest expectation concerning your prayers, that he had an earnest expectation that if you're looking for good, I believe you're going to see it. You just have to keep your eyes on the Lord. For there is good coming to us. Good season coming up. Hallelujah. Well, this is September. We might as well keep on... Looking for good. God's got good. Oh, yeah. God doesn't have any bad. No. God's not a bad God. He's a, he's a good, good God. All the time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> you know, I, I was praying this morning early. I heard the word pancreatic cancer. Pancreatic cancer. Does that mean anything to anybody? It's fine. I, just, I was just praying. Does that mean anything to somebody? Might not be you, but might be somebody very close to you. Pancreatic cancer. He didn't give me any instruction about it. I just heard that word. Pancreatic cancer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Pancreatic cancer. Is that you, Deborah, back there? Waving up here, you just wave like your fingers. Writing with my fingers. I've done it all my life. Okay. And I pray to God it's not me. No, 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 no. I'm not saying it's anybody. It could be somebody that we know, somebody that reasonably close. So if, if it is and you, you realize, hey, there's somebody you may be close in your family or something, to come and see me. We'll give a, we have a prayer cloth for them. And then you can give that to them. Or if it's somebody that's watching by the live stream, then that does uh, that uh, uh, then uh, get a hold of us and we will see to it that uh, we, that prayer goes up. I believe the Lord wants to do for something for somebody. So, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. In uh, Ecclesiastics, uh, Ecclesiastics 
chapter 11, verse 4. Ecclesiastics, uh, chapter 11, we don't get there very often, but it's an interesting book, but the list of the said, he that observeth the wind shall not sow. So it's just talking about uh, when there's, sometimes people will observe something and they decide, well, you know, I just can't sow. You know, I'm not going to sow my seed because, you know, it's a little bit too windy today or something like that. And so uh, when they don't sow, there's not going to be a harvest, is there? When we observe and say, well, I just don't think I can afford to, uh, I've had the, actually had the Lord say to me at different times, said, Gary, you can't afford not to do something. And so, uh, uh, and to my utter amazement, uh, God was, he would show up and as I, in my, the first church that we had started, uh, we really needed some land to, uh, or a building, and so somebody had found some land that was uh, on Tanglewood Drive. And so we drove by it, and, and they wanted at that time, in 19, uh, 1982, they wanted 37000 I think $500. And so I said, $37,500? I said, oh my gosh, Lord. I said, that's, that's too much. I said, we can't afford that. And the Lord said to me, you can't afford not to buy that. Mm. And so we bought it, and within, I think, three or four months, we'd raised all that. I had it all paid back and everything. Praise God. Went ahead, we built a, a facility, a brand new facility, that we could see 550. And so, uh, and we actually saw that build up a time or two with some of our guest speakers. Mm. And so sometimes, you know, it just simply says, he that observes the wind. We, if we're busy observing a lot of things, and the Lord is saying, you know, you need to sow and you need to give. Uh, it says, he that observes the wind will not sow, and he that regards the clouds will not reap. Mm. And so if we if we don't sow, then there is no no harvest available. I've heard Kenneth Hagin say this many times. Oftentimes people are looking for a harvest, and they've never sowed into the into the harvest. Mm. So you really can't expect a harvest without sowing. Amen? Amen? And we are people that love harvest, don't we? Amen. We love to sow, we love to give, and also we... <laughs> before we get too far, we're also uh, uh, taking up a special offering for Brother Begley's expenses for being here. Uh, his plane ticket is about $900, and so uh, we are ready, we want to raise some funds and get that taken care of. His room is uh, reasonably, you know, it, it's reasonable, but we're going to be raising funds for that too, and so I think as, as near as I can tell, we've got like $375 already, three fifty something like that. And so we want to get that all wrapped up and cleared up long before he gets here. Amen? Amen. Can you believe with me? We'll get it all covered. Yes. Amen. <laughs> well, let's say something some, something good together. Say, Heavenly Father, yes. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I, don't I don't observe the wind. And I don't observe the clouds. I, I just observe your will. <laughs> your plan for my life. <laughs> and I'm a sower. I'm a and I'm a giver. And also... I'm a harvester because you have a harvest for me because I've been faithful with the seed you've given me. Thank you for the harvest. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Thank you, Lord. You all look great today. Amen. Amen. How many think that's a little cool in here? How many think it's just right? How many think it's too hot? <laughs> okay. All right. Turn with me to Isaiah. Where's ice cubes? <laughs> Isaiah. Jan's got a winter coat on back there, so I'm just... <laughs> Turn with me to Isaiah, chapter 51. Um, let me see. Isaiah, uh, Isaiah 51, verse 1. I'm going to underline mine right now. I remember Brother Hagin said one time to us, he said, uh, uh, if you can't write in your Bible and underline things in your Bible, go buy a Bible that you can do that to. Okay. Isaiah 51, verse 1. I like to have, uh, uh, I, I give my message this title that helps me to uh, go back and, and look for things again. And so the name of the message, if you're interested, is take advantage of what's been provided. All right? Mm. Take advantage. 
of what's been provided. And this scripture, uh, I, I've said before, the Lord oftentimes speaks to me in scriptures, and or a part of the scripture. And so uh, uh, yesterday, as I was kind of waiting on the Lord, uh, this this he quoted part of this verse to me. I have never preached on this verse. I have not thought of this verse in probably 30 or 40 years. Outside, I may have read it uh, long in reading it just in Isaiah. But uh, he, he brought this up uh, very plain. It says, Hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness, that you seek the Lord. Look unto the rock wherein you were hewn, and to the hole of the pit wherein you were digged. As a translation says, you know, look to the rock where you were uh, 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 brought out of and to the, the what was that word, Lord? Um, um, the pit isn't a, a real good word. Um, anyway, it's where, uh, you know, like, like a gold mine, you know, where you, you what? Shaft? Shaft? Not a shaft, not a, sh a shaft, no. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> My quarry? Quarry, that's the word. Thank you so much. Quarry. That was the word that was other translation. It says, look to the rock where you were hewn and to the quarry where you were digged out of. And so it just simply puts us in remembrance that, that we are to look. We're, we're to look. So, so oftentimes, you know, we, as, as pastor of a church, I, I realize that people have, have problems, they have issues, uh, and I there's all around us and other people that I see about Facebook and all different kinds of people are sometimes are in great struggles and great problems. And sometimes the last place we look is is really to the Lord concerning things. And so I just really want to talk a little bit about that. Uh, it says here, it just tells us, look, look to the, uh, it says, uh, look into the rock where you were cut out of. He's saying, go back and, and look back. Look at, look at what has been given to us. Yeah. And it's so important to look to the one who has done <coughs> everything for us. You, we, face, we face trials. We're living in the end times. We, we, we face difficulties. We face uh, you know, financial problems. We face uh, uh, physical problems. We, pray, we face emotional, stressful problems. We face family problems. We live in a world that the, the Bible says the perilous times shall come. And so sometimes it's just so easy to get so wrapped up and, and get caught up in what's happening around us that sometimes we, we don't even know, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know where to turn. And sometimes we forget that we really should, first of all, turn to the Lord in everything that we do. These should be the first thing. Brother Hagin would say this, and if you don't like Brother Hagin, then, then uh, you probably don't like me very well. <laughs> but I sat under him. For many years, the Lord directed me and had me go there. And he, he, would, he faced multitudes of, of problems also. And he, he got to the place, he would say, when, when a problem would come, he'd say, well, praise the Lord, another opportunity to prove God's word is true. Amen. There you go. Just, see, he was in such a, most Christians never get to that place. Yes. They're, oh, woe was me. What have I, 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 I've been there. I said, I, I remember flu symptoms would come. And I'd say, Lord, what did I do to get deserve this? It's like I was blaming God for the last, you know, he's the one that helps and heals. And I'm saying, what did I do? Anybody ever do that? What did I do to deserve this? Yeah. Well, yeah. the devil's out there. It's not God doing all those That's things. Right. And so he would just simply say, he, he was at such a place in his walk with God. Lord, another opportunity to prove that your word is true. And so it says, look to the rock. Look to the, uh, what was that word again, Krista? Uh, Corey. Look to the quarry. Look to the to the place that that, that, that that we are to look to. There there is somebody that has answers. I don't have all the answers, but I know the one that does. Amen. And I did forget to mention that Pastor Barbara's she's here with us today, and she's going to be ministering tonight here at Church Holy Ghost Night. Going to be good. Going to be good. It's always good to have her all the way from BC. All right. And so uh, her and her husband passed her out there and went to church out there. And so she gets back here to spend a little time with her dad. And we're always, it's always a blessing to yes. have her with us. Amen. And so uh, we're just, we're just thrilled. Amen. Mm -hmm. And the number of their families come. We're, we're thrilled to have all their families here too. So, amen. <laughs> I don't want to pick on just Barb. So. And uh, anyway, 
Turn with me to Psalms 103, verse 1. Psalms 103, verse 1. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise Bless God. the Lord, oh my soul. We were here last week. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all of this was done. Bless his holy name. I said, what would that look like if we actually did that? <laughs> I mean, really. I mean, what would it look like if we really just blessed the Lord, you know, with all that was within us? Well, it might be a little different than us just sitting there. We might have a little more something to us. But here it just simply said, Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within in me. Bless his holy name. Verse 2. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. So he's reminding us that there are some benefits. Don't forget the benefits. That's what we're talking about this morning, is not forgetting the benefits that have been provided for us. Amen? Amen. So we, we, we uh, had ordered a, a washing machine because our old washing machine gave up the ghost in a violent way. And uh, it died. And uh, so anyway, we went and, and the, the guy that, that came out to check our, our washing machine and, and pronounced it dead, he said... If you're going to buy a washing machine, buy a, buy, buy, he named some different ones. He said, don't buy them. He says, because they're good, but they're all, they're electronic, so much electronic, and you can't get them fixed. He said, get a GE or something like that. So I said, well, where can we buy a GE? And then we went to, well, I'm not going to better not name the place we went to, but it is, it is a place Sam is very familiar with. Okay? <laughs> and so we went there and, and we bought a, a, a GE washer and, um, uh, and so it took two weeks to have it delivered, and they delivered it Friday. And, uh, and so uh, I get this panic call from my wife, and she says, Can you better come home? There's water everywhere. Oh, oh my. Well, the people that installed the wash machine, I, I don't know that they really knew what they were doing because they, they broke, they said the, the hose burst. Well, the hose didn't burst, they broke it. And so then there's water going everywhere, uh, upstairs, downstairs, down in the basement, down through the ceiling. And, uh, and so they said, you need a plumber. And so you would have thought they would have shut the water off properly. Well, they didn't shut the water off properly. And so it just kept on just running and dribbling. And so by the time I got there, there was a fairly good mess. And so anyway, and I, I did call a, a, a plumber. I called about five of them until I found one that could come right away. And they said, well, we can get to you next week. I said, yeah. forget it. I need it now. I can't wait. And so finally they got somebody out there, and, and uh, uh, he got he got it, uh, uh, got the washing machine hooked up and, and uh, got the leak stopped. And he said, you need to call these, these people that restore, you know, damage, uh, damage, well, I don't know what you call them. Uh, so anyway, I got a hold of Gullison, so they're just down the street here, and uh, so they came out, and uh, and when I called Gullison, he said, uh, he said, uh, all right, but I want my money right away. I was like, I remembered the benefits. I have home insurance. Yes. I have home insurance. And so you know, we, uh, you know, it, it's it's been a like a really expensive couple of weeks lately. And uh, I'm not complaining about that, but it, it's just been my TV died. Oh. It just died. Oh. But it's, it is old TV, and, and so but we decided we could live without a without a TV for a while. And, and uh, I do have one in my my, my bedroom, a small one, so uh, we can we can survive. <laughs> anyway. But you know what? We just I just have to go back and I just remember the benefits. He said, "Well, aren't you upset about the mess? Aren't you all upset?" I said, "No, we. I'm just thinking of the benefits. I've, I've, got, I've got somehow God's going to work it all out." Amen. Okay. And so sometimes we, we just have. It's easy to forget. It's easy to forget uh, about some of the benefits that we have. And he said, "I don't forget the benefits." Listen, listen to me. You're you're going to face trouble. You're going to have problems in, 
and, and I remember, I know I mean, we're faith people, but uh, uh, it doesn't, doesn't keep the problems away, but it gets us through them, okay, with, with victory. And so, but we want to remember who, who, who we look to. We look to the, to the one that, that, that the rock, wherever she was, oh, uh, we yes. just, man, he's, he's there, he's going to hell. And, and we have to look to that. He is a very present help in the time of trouble. Mm, yes. Well, why did they put that in the Bible? Because we're going to have some problems from time to time. I had an instructor that uh, when I went to Bible school, and uh, he had a class on suffering, and I called him, his name was Randy, and so I was so suffering with Randy was my class. And, and so he was, he was one of the first to go through the Bible school in, I think, 1976. I, I went in 1980. And so... He said, man, he said, I got to hold this faith stuff. He said, man, when I leave here, I am never going to have another problem in my life. I've learned that faith has worked for everything. I've never had any more troubles, no more crises. And, and uh, he found out very, very quickly that uh, they, were still gonna, they were still going to come. You're all the faith in the world is going to keep them from coming to us. It says in, in uh, Acts uh, uh, 14, I believe it is, I think it's. 14. Acts is in the New Testament, too. Acts. Um, verse 22. Acts 14, 22. And confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith, continue in the faith, exhorting. Exhorting. Barnabas was an exhorter. That means that his ministry at that point was to encourage people. Do you know what a, what, how important a, it is to be an encourager? Yes. When, when Christians are discouraged, I always try to be an encourager. Okay? Encourage people to trust God. And here it just simply says, and exhorting them to continue in the faith, and that we must, much, we must through much tribulation... Well, I thought these were faith people. Yeah. But there's lots of tribulation that, that we go through. Okay? There's difficulties, there's problems. But we go, we don't, you know, we was listening to one song this morning, one of the lines was, he says, I trust, I, I, he's the fourth man in the fire. Talking about Shadrach, Meshach, and, the, and Abednego. You know, there, there's that, that fourth man in the fire has always been with us. Yes. Just have to learn to turn to him. <coughs> learn to trust him. I'm not saying things are always going to be easy, but you're not alone. You're never alone. We're never alone. And so there are going to be problems. There are going to be things. But do, are, we, are we going to take advantage of what is available to us? Hallelujah. Romans 8.26. Scripture we're all quite familiar with. Romans 8.26. Likewise, the Spirit also helps us our infirmities. Well, infirmities is... is Basically trans, uh, translated as to problems, situations, troubles, things not going right, can, can involve sickness and pain and things like that. Likewise, the Spirit also help us, our infirmities. And so we've got a helper, okay? The Holy Ghost. Hmm. The Holy Ghost. Likewise, the Spirit. Sometimes, you know, we're looking for help, but we don't always kind of look to the helper. We're, you know, the... It's like a, a, I do watch a little bit of football uh, occasionally, and uh, the coach never runs the plays. The quarterback does, and the people on the, on the field. But he, he gives the, the what plays to run. Mm. And so the Holy Spirit will tell us what to do, and then we have to do our part. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right? But if we, don't, if we don't communicate with the Holy Spirit then he's not going to be able to have to help us and tell us what to do. But if we would learn to turn to the one that has the answers, the one that is the helper, likewise the Spirit also helps our infirmities. And it goes on to say, well, he says, uh, but we do not know uh, what we should pray for as we ought. It doesn't, doesn't say we don't pray. It says we, we really don't understand. See, we don't see everything. Mm -hmm. 
All we see is, is the problem. And sometimes there, there's other mitigating circumstances around that. Sometimes I pray for so and so, pray for Billy. He's about to lose his job. And he, 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 he needs this job. Well, yeah, we, we could pray for Billy that he wouldn't lose his job. But what if God's got a whole bit, bit, big, bigger, better job with much better benefits for Billy? Right. I heard this, this story, a true story, when I was going to Bible school. Uh, a gentleman, he, he had faith and he was believing God. And he, he said, but I need a raise. I, I have to have a raise. I, you know, with all the expenses and everything and the way things are going. So he went to his boss. He's one of the best employees they had. And he says, I, 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 just, I just have to have a raise. I really do. And the, the boss said, I'm sorry. We're not going to give you a raise. We're just not going to do it. He says, well, I have to have a raise. And he said, that, he said well, we're not going to give you a raise. And, and so he, he ended up having to quit. And he was, he was saying, Lord, I, I was trusting you. I was trusting you that you were going to, you know, touch my boss's heart that he was going to give me a raise. A few days later, he found a, a job paid a whole lot more, got had a whole much more benefits, and he was much happier in that new job. Amen. Yeah. See, see, God is trying to connect us so that we can be in His flow. Yes. Mm -hmm. But we've got to learn to look to Him, to turn to Him in everything. Okay, turn to Him. Why? Because he's got the answer. Mm -hmm. Likewise, the Spirit often help us our infirmities, for we know not what to pray for as we are. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Verse 27, please. Mm -hmm. And he that searches the heart, and he that searches the heart knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God, and we know. Mm -hmm. And we know. Do you know? Do you really know this? I've learned that if I can get a hold of it praying in the Holy Ghost, I, and I know all things will work together for good. I got a promise. I've got a promise. It doesn't matter how bleak and how bad it looks. I have a promise. Okay? I've got a promise. And I know all things are going to work for my good. I like what Lester Summerall said, and it's not a contradiction to this. God does not do what is good. God does not do what is good. God does what is best for us. I like best. Okay? Yes. I like best. I remember I've heard this before. I was listening to Lester Summerall one time, and, and he had, uh, uh, had been going to a number of churches and every year he'd come back to this one church and there was a particular lady there he said it was the most spiritual lady he had ever met in his life I mean she worked the altar she was there for prayer he, and this and he just you know had gotten to know her and she was just so spiritual so wonderful and when he came back one year she wasn't there and so he's asked the pastor he said well sister so so what, what's happened to her she he said well you know uh, uh, she, she, her husband was a, was a was a heathen and a sinner, but he was a, a businessman, and uh, uh, he had a he he died and had had a big insurance policy and left her with a huge insurance uh, amount of money when she died. And she said the minute she got the money, that's the last we ever saw of her. Oh. Wow. And I remember Dr. Summerall said this. Now, you, if you're sensitive to the spirit, and, and I was at that time anyway, uh, I. He said, Lord, don't ever let anything like that come into my life it was, if it would separate me from Amen. you. Amen. Well, I remember I got a little bit in, indignant down in my spirit. <laughs> making my head. I got a little indignant, and I said, Lord. I said, I'd like to make that decision if it's good for me. How carnal sometimes we are when we think we're so spiritual. Yeah. I said, well, Lord, I'd like to make that decision whether that million dollars is good for me or not. <laughs> and then I, I caught myself. And I said, oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Don't let anything come into my life if it would separate me from you. That's right. Nothing is worth getting separated from God. That's right. Nothing is worth it. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. 
Sita Vara Bhutana Krishna Kara Dana Raja Vara. Isaiah 28, verse 11. Uh, we'd like to start here. We're just talking about taking advantage of what's been provided for us. Taking advantage of what's been provided for us. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. Verse 12, please. To whom it is said, this is the rest wherein you may cause the weary to rest and this is the refreshing. This is the rest. This is the refreshing. What is that? Praying in the Holy Ghost. This is the rest. This is the, re the refreshing. And what's that next line say? And yet, yet they, would not hear. they wouldn't hear it. They wouldn't receive it. And yet they would not hear. Let's, let's don't be like them. Here's the answer to many of life's problems. Now the Lord may direct you to, you know, if you're, if you're having a physical problem, the Lord may direct you, now, now go see a doctor about this, okay? There's nothing, we believe in doctors, okay? But the best thing to do is look to the Lord first. Lord, what do you want me to do? You've heard me share the story before of Doc Horton, and he had preached a sermon about you can laugh your way through anything. Mm -hmm. Well, a, a few weeks later after he preached that message, he ended up with kidney stones. Ooh. Bad case of kidney stones, really bad. And so he was doubled over with pain, and his crying and hollering, and they rush him to the emergency room, and they do whatever they do to, to find out what the problem is, and they said to him, you have the worst case of stones we've ever seen. In fact, if we, we have to operate now. We have to operate now or you will die. There is no way that you, you won't be able to pass these stones. You will die. And we have to do it now. And Dr. Horton said, he said, just give me a minute. You know, let me, let me be over and I've got to talk to the Lord about this. And they, you know, he, he was you know, faced with, with life and death. He said, I, I, I've got to talk to God about this. And so they left him alone for a few minutes and no family wasn't there or you know, in the room with him. He said, Lord, what is going on? He said, and the Lord said, do you remember that message that you just preached a, a few weeks ago about you can laugh your way through anything? He said, yeah. He said, well, uh, I was listening to that message, but so was the devil. And the devil decided to check and see if you really believed that what you said. And so he is visiting you right now. Oh. Now remember, he's, this is his life. And he's, he packed himself up and told his wife, take me home. He said, Doc, you heard what the doctor said, take me home. And he went home and he said, I'm going to go in my, the bedroom, I'm going to lock the door, don't anybody come in the door under any circumstances, no matter what you hear. And he went in there and the pain just, and he started to laugh started to laugh, and I mean, it was, and then it'd be even worse, he'd laugh even harder. And he, he laughed, and he laughed, and laughed, and, and finally, he, 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 the devil would do that, and he just, he started laughing at the devil, and he said, that's the best you got. <laughs> he said, I don't know what had happened, but sometime when I was laughing, everything just disappeared, everything, every oh, kidney wow. stone, everything just dissolved, it was all gone. Wow. What a testimony. Yes. Mm. Yes. What a testimony. Return to God first. Okay? Well, the, you know, for whatever reason, God wanted to, to do it supernaturally like that. Mm -hmm. He could have said, I'll go back in there and have the surgery. I'm sure he would have. Hallelujah. And so, this is the rest. You know, do you, are you worn out? Are you discouraged? Are you, you know, are you disappointed? Yeah, there's a, there is an answer from, from the Lord. Yeah. And I, I realize that, that uh, you know, there, there's Valium and Percocet and all, all these other things that are, are made available to, to people to help them find peace and calm down and everything. And, and I'm not saying that there's anything wrong or anything, but, but there's, what about this? Mm. This is the rest. just simply says, that's available to us. Mm -hmm. Jude, verse 20, but ye beloved building up yourself on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. 
But if you're run down, it says build yourself up. How do I build myself up? Lord, by praying in the Holy Ghost. Something happens when you're praying in the Holy Ghost. When we remember the benefits. When we remember what God has provided for us, what is available to the church, to me and to you, things are available to help. He has sent the helper. What about this one? John 14, 27. John 14, 27. If my son was here, he'd say, How am I doing? <laughs> Thank you for that one. Peace. Everybody say peace. 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 I leave with you. And this is Jesus speaking. Peace. I leave with you. My peace. My peace. Oh my gosh. I leave with you. I give unto you. The world will give you Percocet. <laughs> Valium. <laughs> Many other things. They will give you all kinds of things. To, to help you find peace. But he says, I give, I give unto you, not as the world would give unto you, I give unto you, let not your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. The Amplified says, peace I leave with you, my perfect peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you, do not let your hearts be troubled, nor let it be afraid. Let my perfect peace calm you in every circumstance, and give you courage and strength for every challenge. The New Living Translation says, I'm leaving you with a gift. A gift of peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is the gift the world cannot give. So do not be troubled or afraid. Go with me to 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles chapter 16. 2 Chronicles chapter 16. And we're going to find... Uh, a gentleman by the name of Asa, A-S-A, -A, okay? And Asa, uh, in uh, chapter 15, okay? In verse 8, and when Asa heard these words and the prophecy of, of Oded, the prophet, he took courage and put away the abominations of the idols out of the land of Judah and Benjamin out of the cities which he had taken from Mount Ephraim and renewed the altar of the Lord and was before the porch of the Lord and he started doing good. Okay. In verse 17 it says, But the high places were not taken out of Israel. Nevertheless, the heart of Asa was perfect all of his days. Well, that's a good thing. Asa's doing pretty good. Okay. You get into chapter 16 and then you get into verse 7. And then Hannah and I, the, the seer, came to uh, and said, King of Judah, and said unto him, Because thou hast relied on the king of Syria, and not relied on the Lord. <clears throat> he turned to the king of Syria for some help, instead of asking the Lord first. Because thou hast relied on the king of Syria, and not relied on the Lord, uh, thy God, therefore is the host of the king of Syria escaped out of thy hand. Verse 9 says, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards him. Here and thou hast done foolishly, from thenceforth thou shalt have wars. Then Asa was angry, he was wroth, he was really ticked off with the seer. Okay? Now, here's a good time to put something in. A true prophet of God isn't always going to give you a happy, feel good word. He'll correct you. He will correct you. Okay? He'll say, you're, you're, not, you're not doing right, you get away from that. Hallelujah. Yes. Out of metal right now. Yeah. No. A little bit. Needs to be said, Pastor. Uh, oh, what was his name, Lord? Um, oh, uh, William Branham. Was, he was a prophet of renown. Oh, my goodness. He was a prophet of renown. Brother Hagin said he was, the, he was perhaps in his day the greatest prophet since uh, the, the biblical days. And. A lady came up and, I mean, he, he talked about reading your mail. He, he could tell you who licked the stamp, even. <laughs> Just amazing how he would be able to do that. And a lady came up and she said, you know, he, he, he said that she gave up for prayer for her marriage. And, and he said to her, he said, your husband's right now at a motel 
And he described the woman he was with, and she said, oh my gosh, that's his secretary. And they're having an affair. Okay? And he went on, I mean, told her about all the details that were going on, and there was this line of people that were behind her, waiting in line for him to minister to. And when he read her mail and told her what, how, what bad things were going on with, with, with the marriage, uh, most of them went and sat down. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want nobody looking at my mail, quite like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, sometimes the prophets, you know, is not always a, 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 I've had words for people that were not nice, okay? Uh, even in this, this building years ago, I, I walked up to a couple that were there, sitting there. And I, and I looked at her in the eye and I told her, I said, you're, you're making a mistake. You need, you need to get away from this person. I mean, you're sitting right there. Well, they didn't listen and problems, problems came for a while. But then eventually things didn't get straightened out. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Now look, drop down to verse 12. Verse 12. We're talking about, you know, taking advantage of what's available. And, and Asa, in his 39th year of his reign, was diseased in his feet. Until his disease was exceedingly great, yet, in, look at this, yet in his disease he sought not to the Lord, but to the physician. And so what was available, it, he had a healing covenant with Jehovah Rapha. And he, instead of turning to God first, he didn't bother, he just turned to the doctors. I believe in doctors. I've been to doctors. I, but I still think the first thing I do is turn to the Lord. Lord, I'm looking to you. What should I do? Do you want me to go? I remember one time I went and, and the, the Lord said they, they want to do blood work on you. I said, okay. He said, they're going to find a problem with your blood. They're going to tell you you need to go back and have another blood test right away. And then when you have the second blood test, they won't be able to find anything. That's exactly what happened. They found They said, hey, man, there's something not right here. Well, you better do another one. I said, okay, but they won't find anything. Uh, just, if you walk with the Lord, I mean, He does help us somewhat. Yes. It says He, you know, He had a physical problem. It didn't say doctors were bad. It said you should first look to the look to the rock mm -hmm. yes. and to the quarry where you've been hewn out of. Look at the benefits. Remember the benefits, because you and I have something called the Holy Ghost. Now let's go down to. Uh, John 14, verse 16, please. John 14, verse 16. Glory, glory, glory. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. Notice that word, another. Mm. It means uh, exactly like himself. And so the, the Holy Ghost is exactly like Jesus. With all of his abilities, with all of his anointings, with all of his power, and with all of his glory. Amen. Whatever Jesus could do on the earth, the Holy Ghost was also able to do it. Amen. The only problem, the only difference between Jesus at this point and the, and the Comforter was the Comforter could be everywhere. And Jesus was in his physical, physical body could only be in one place at one time. And so he says, it's expedient to you, or it's better for you, if I go away, I will send the Comforter. All right. I will send the comforter. He has sent the comforter to us. Hallelujah. And the comforter, uh, it, can we read it in the Amplified to uh, Deborah? Isn't Deborah doing a great job? Yes. Okay. Hallelujah. Amplified Bible, John 14, 16. That's verse 17. If we could go back to verse 16, please. Thank you, Lord. Verse 16. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another comforter. Counselor. Counselor. You don't, don't know what to do. The Holy Ghost, the comforter, is a counselor. 
the wisdom that heaven has, the wisdom that heaven has is available to you. Where, let me ask you a question. Where does the comforter live right now? In us. Right in us. We're looking everywhere and out in the world for trying to, you know, I need some direction. Do you look to the direction given that's on the inside of us? He says, I, I'm going to send you another couple, a counselor. He, what's the counselors do? They give counsel. They give, they give wise advice. The counselor can say, don't do that. Or go ahead, it's okay. This, this is good. Uh, Brother Hagen will talk about green lights <laughs> and red lights. Okay? You'll have a green light on the inside if it's all right. You'll have either maybe a caution light you know, or a red light. Yeah. If you violate the red light, what happens in the natural if you run a red light possibly? What could happen to you? You get T-boned. You could be killed. Same thing in the spirit realm. You and I can violate. You got time for a story? Absolutely. Howdy. Well, I'm pastoring in Oklahoma. And that's cowboy country. And my kids walk up and say, Daddy, we want to go horseback riding. We want to go horseback riding. I said, well, all right. We got people in the church. They got horses. And so we went up to this one ranch and, and, uh, and, and the kids were riding around in the, in the corral and, and just, uh, just doing their thing. And finally, the, the, the young the guy that, that owned the ranch, he said, well, Pastor, would you like to, would you like to ride the horse? And I said, it was, I had this little something that said, you don't need to do this. But I, a little something, just that little, you don't need to do this. But I didn't want him to think I was a panty waist. Don't know that. He <laughs> didn't want him to think. Hey, there's that word you so, I said, sure. And the horse was so big. You know, normally you could put your foot in the stirrup and stirrup. I had to climb up the side of the fence to get him on the horse. He was, oh, he was huge. And, and so we're, we're there prowling, he opens up the gate, and, and so we're, now we're going out in the field, you know, we're, you know, just, just kind of walking along. And he turns to me and says, he said, man, that's amazing. I said, what's amazing? He said that the horse you're riding, that, that he'd let you, I said, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> and about this, we were going through some, 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 some weeds, and all of a sudden, a rabbit took off at the feet of my horse. My horse panicked and took off, you know, like a bat out of Bermuda. I mean, shh, it just was flying. Okay. And I'm riding, and he, he, he's behind me. He's like, Pastor, hold on. I said, what do you think I'm <laughs> And so, eventually I fell off. I think that's when I fractured my, my shoulder. My collarbone, I think. Was and so, but I'd always heard that if you fall off a horse, you should get up and get on again. No. No. Bicycle baby. So I said, help me get on this horse. So I got on. It's shaking up a little bit. Kind of going, okay. And we're going along, and all of a sudden he spots horses in a far field, and they're galloping like this. You know, like they're going to he decides he wants to join them. Oh, he goes there. I mean, he is he is flying. You ever see these 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 cowboys in, in the rodeo? And that's me. I didn't even know I was in the rodeo. I'm all over. I'm, I'm all over the place. Finally, it throws me, and I land on my hands and my face. And I'm just laying there, and he's, oh my God, he's dead. I remember he, he's dead. Well, I had been teaching on the name of Jesus, and when I was flying through the air, I was calling on his name, Jesus. Jesus. You know, he's got, you know, oh my God, I killed the pastor. He's like, I'm not dead. I had shattered the, every bone in, in my wrist, both hands. I shattered everything. And I was in a pass for for over eight weeks. But see, I had that little, I overrode that little, that little, little something. 
say, people say, well, you're a pastor. How come God didn't protect him? He tried. Yes. Yeah. He tried. <laughs> but I overrode him. Just because of pride. And I didn't want to have somebody think of me anything less of me. Anyway, that's an expensive lesson to learn. Yes. Yeah. It is. Hallelujah. How do we get up on that? <laughs> oh, yeah. Counselor. I'll give the counselor. I had the counselor and he's saying, don't do it. Yeah. You know, no, you violated it. You violate these things. The counselor, he's telling you what's for, what is the best thing for us. Okay. Helper. You know, sometimes uh, I need help. And my wife is a, is a great helper. She, she just helps. But then there are some things, you know, you just, you just need help from somebody that can, can, can help. And I need I need help from a plumber. You know, I need help from people that can do a lot of other things. I, I just, because I don't have the equipment and the tools, and so I have other people. But there is a Holy Ghost helper for you and for me. You're not alone. You've got somebody who's longing to help you. But sometimes we've got too much pride. We're not going to ask for help. Oh, my God, I don't ask for help. No, we're not lost. We're just confused where we're at. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Counselor, helper, intercessor. I've got someone that's, that's interceding for me. Change territory. Okay. Advocate. Yeah, I got a lawyer. Yes. I got a lawyer in the courts of heaven. Thank God. Mm. I got because we got we there's accuser of the brethren that's accusing you yeah. before the Lord. He's saying, look at look at this first. Look at the thoughts they had. Look at the words they said. Look at they lost their temper. They got all upset. Yeah. And then my lawyer is saying, don't say a word. Well, I, I should plead guilty. No, don't plead guilty. Let me handle it. You have an uh, advocate, a lawyer. His name is Jesus. And he's going to get you off. Because he, he does, the devil doesn't know, but he knows the, the, the judge. That's his dad. So you and I have a lawyer in the courts of heaven. Hallelujah. Strengthen her when I feel so weak. You ever feel so weak? Sometimes I just, I just, you just want to quit. You don't want to, you just, it's just so, too much, it's so much. You just want to give up, you don't want to quit sometimes. But there's something on the inside of you that's going to let you quit. Amen. He's going to give you strength. Because he's a strengthener. There's times, Lord, I, just, I need your strength right now. For what I'm going through. And he's a strengthener. Hallelujah. And a standby. That means someone that you can call on when there's an emergency. Amen? Amen. When you have an emergency, there's somebody you can call on. I'm so glad I've got somebody I can call Amen. on. Amen. Taking advantage of what's been given to me. Amen. Ephesians chapter 6, it says, uh, uh, you know, after you've, you've done all, it says, have you done all? Amen. Stand. Yeah. Most of the times we haven't done the all. Do everything you need to do. Do all. Huh? Do all. Okay? Do all. Have you done all? Oftentimes, be sure you've done the all part. We can do it in the natural, but sometimes we don't do the all part with God. Talking about doing the doing everything you need to do with God. If you, if you need to, to repent for something, repent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you need to apologize, apologize. Mm -hmm. If you need to, if you, if you need to, to make things right, make things right. Do everything you can. Why? Because there's blessings that God God can work if we don't tie His hands. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes God wants to, but we we we, we you know you not going to violate our, our what we want. I want what God wants. Don't you? Yes. yes. Yeah. Thank you for your excitement. Yeah. One last scripture. Everybody goes, phew, that's good. <laughs> Exodus chapter 10, verse 23. Exodus chapter 10, verse 23. And the, the Egyptians, this is the, the, the tenth, uh, ninth plague. And the Egyptians could not see one another because it was darkness. Their god, Ra, R-A, was a, the sun god, and they worshipped the sun god. All of the, all of the, the, the plagues that came were 
judgments against all the gods that, that Egypt worshipped. Hmm. They worshipped the Nile, he turned it to blood. They worshipped frogs, he gave them frogs, you know, flies. They worshipped flies, they worshipped all these different things. And then they worshipped, this is the ninth place, and they worshipped uh, they worshipped uh, Ra. Okay? And so God, for three days, turns out the lights. The sun refused to shine. In fact, it said it was the darkness was so so dark, it was a supernatural darkness. Mm. Had to be supernatural. Because mm -hmm. they would light a candle, and the candle would light, but it wouldn't give off any light. Mm. Do you know what happens when you're in the dark, mm -hmm. and you can't, you're, you can't see anything? That's when people's fears begin to really begin to get a hold. What was that noise? No. Something's under the bed, or whatever. And so after three days and three nights, they're, they're, they're terrified. Because this, this is not normal anymore. Now what's wrong? What's wrong with the world? What's wrong with my world? Every day the sun comes up, not, but now for three days, nothing. It's just total darkness, total darkness. And yet it says, concerning where the, where the Israelis, the Hebrews live, uh, they could not see one another, nor did anyone rise from his place for three days. But all the Israelites had natural light and their dwellings, it says, and there was light in the land of Goshen. Mm -hmm. I was sitting there a number of years ago in the middle of praying and worship, and the Lord said to me, and there was light in the land of Goshen. Mm -hmm. I was teaching on the end times. And I, I, I understand it to say, no matter how dark things are going to get, they are going to get dark. Mm -hmm. No matter how bad things get, things will get, get much worse. There was light in the land of Goshen. Mm -hmm. That meant to the child of God, mm -hmm. there was provision, there was protection, mm -hmm. there was light, no matter how dark it got, all you had to do was stay with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Don't forget, people, people are beginning to, to panic over things. Mm -hmm. Wait until a couple of nuclear bombs go off. Mm -hmm. You say, well, certainly that's, oh, I wouldn't say certainly it's not. I, I think it's going to happen at some point. <clears throat> Somewhere. Things are, things are going to get, they're just going to get worse. Well, I don't like that message. Well, I can't help that. We're living in perilous times. That's We're right. living at the end of the age. Yeah. All these things have to come. Okay? We're in for a bumpy ride. Okay? And we thought COVID was bumpy. Things can get a lot bumpier before we're out of here, probably. But the thing is, don't forget the benefits. Don't forget, mm. God will cover you, protect you, insulate you, keep you. He'll be the fourth man in the fire. He will get you through all of these things. He'll make a way. He makes a way where there doesn't seem to be a way, amen? Yeah. Pastor Tony, come wrap this up for me, please, sir. Appreciate Pastor Tony. Amen. Amen. I've tried, been trying to get him to come and minister, but he keeps turning me down. I said, okay, big guy. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Everybody says amen? Amen. Oh, that was good, good. Did everybody say amen? Amen. 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 That's better, amen. Yes. Seek first the kingdom of God. Everything, everything. Mm. Show the attitude. God says, fear not, fear not. So there are 3,000 different promises in the Bible. 3,000 different promises. God says, I'll be for you. Who can be against you? He says, fear not. Amen? You've got the Holy Ghost. Man, I tell you, I talk to you. I talk to the Holy Ghost all day long. I do, I do. No, I talk to just like I was talking to you. Amen? And he answers. The Bible says, my sheep, they hear my voice. And the voice of a stranger, they shall not follow. Amen. Seek first the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. And everything, everything, everything. Did I say everything? Everything. Everything shall be added on to you. God says, God be for you. Who can be against you? Pastor, I agree with you. There's some peerless time like never before. We're going to see, we're in that place right now, not, not months and years from now. It's going to get darker yeah. and darker and darker. But I say unto you, fear not. God be for you. Who can be against you? Here, listen to the Holy Spirit. Uh, about three, oh, 
three weeks ago, the Lord spoke to me in one word. I forget what that word was. One word, just one word. That's spoken in error. Journey, that's what it was, journey. Amen? We're on a journey. I thought, I said, what else are you going to tell me here, God? I never got nothing else, just that word journey. So I came to the journey. And I said, the Lord spoke to me one word, journey. And I went and said, um, whatever I have you. But then the Lord spoke to me again. You know what he told me? He said, line upon line. Precept upon precept. Here a little and there a little. Amen? And what he's telling me everything since I've been a born again Christian, 47 years, I believe it was now, 47 years ago, I learned a lesson over here. And then I learned another lesson over here. And then I learned another lesson over here. The Bible said, my people, it perish for the lack of knowledge. You should know the truth, and the truth should set you free. Yes. But if you don't get into the Word of God, be it, just reading the Scriptures, maybe I'm, you know, listen to a man of God that you know is of God. Yeah. Maybe he's coming to church. Amen? Amen. Hear a little, dear a little. Amen? Line upon line, precept upon precept. My God, I told God last week, I said, God, I said, it's just amazing, just amazing the things that you're showing, that you're revealing, revelation knowledge, the Bible calls it, by the Holy Ghost. You need the Holy Ghost. Yes. We all need the Holy Ghost. Amen. But he gives you here a little bit, there a little bit, there a little bit, and then, amen, amen. but if you don't get into it, right, how do you know what to ask for? How do you know what to receive as to the promises of God? Amen. Am I? Mm -hmm. I said, uh, the things that I, I'm learning the things that I learned 47 years ago, and I thought, why, why don't I understand what this is all about? And it took 47 years before I got that specific, you know, revelation knowledge of what I have. But see, if God knew my beginning from my end, and He knew my end from the beginning, as He knows each and every one of you. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Seek first the kingdom of God. Best investment you'll ever make. Everything else shall be added on to you. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. God loves you. God loves you so much. I have four children. And I love every one of my children. And I'll say, this is my favorite. <laughs> and I'll say, oh, no, this is my favorite. <laughs> this is my favorite. But truly, I don't have no favorites. And God don't have no favorites, neither. Amen. God is not a respecter of persons. Amen? But He will not come against your will. You come not against your words. Blessings and curses and the power of the tongue. Yeah. Choose life and yeah. not death. Yeah. So we can choose death. We can yeah. choose death. Yeah. We can mm -hmm. talk. You know, we, the Bible says, speak those things, be not. As if they were, I didn't speak those things at, at our as if they're not. Mm -hmm. Right? Speak those things, be not. Amen? Where you are is where you are because that's the choice that you made. I mean, I used to hate them when I heard that. I, I didn't make that choice to go through this challenge, this circumstance. I guess I did. Lack of knowledge sometimes. Yeah. Not being obedient to the word. Amen? Not leading, being led by the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Letting the Holy Spirit lead us and guide us and direct us in the way I need to go. Amen? Amen. Oh, that's it. Okay. Tonight, <laughs> 6 o'clock. Our guest speaker. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Tuesday night. Pastor Kathy over here. Let's hear it for Kathy over here. Come on. Wednesday night service. Seven. Seven o'clock. I knew that. And of course next week. God bless you all. War room. War room. Yeah, that's what I said. War room. No. War room. War room. Jesus loves you. I love you all. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah. I'm okay to say that fast.